Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and whether or not we think it's worth the cost. In this episode, we'll be playing V Rising, the survival crafting game with many RPG-like elements where you will grow your powers as a vampire in order to become the next Dracula. Now the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, V Rising is currently in early access and available on PC for $20. So what exactly is the game? Well, V Rising is a survival game set in a world infested by vampires. While it has many different elements to it such as PvP, raiding, challenging bosses, progression, and an in-depth base building system, it is still first and foremost a survival game. The reason we put so much emphasis on it being a survival game is because many players seem to think that it's an MMORPG or an RPG, which it just isn't. While it does have many RPG-like elements in the game, if you die, you will still drop all of your resources. If you are raided, players can destroy your base, and there is no leveling system whatsoever. There is, however, a progression system that ties into just about every element of the game. The primary progression system of V-Rising is your item level. Every item that you have equipped in V-Rising has an item level, and that item level will act as both a power and a hard progression gate. This is because in order to craft better gear to increase your item level, you will need to take out specific bosses within the world. You see, each boss will have specific recipes such as iron weapons, higher tier armor, and crafting tables that are associated with it to allow you to create better gear, refine resources, or improve your castle. Each boss will also have an ability for your vampire that is associated with it, but we will get more into that in a moment. For now, just know that each one of them will also have their own item level, and you will have to be within a certain item level of that boss to be able to track it down and find it. Bosses in V-Rising are easily one of the most intense things you will have to deal with, as each one of them has different mechanics for you to handle. While early on, you may only need to dodge a melee attack and deal with a couple of mobs, as you progress further and further into the game, you will notice that each boss has progressively more difficult mechanics for you to deal with. For an example, one of the bosses that we struggled on was the Elementalist, which is a rather late game boss who uses her abilities to clone herself, shoot fire in a circle, stun you, CC you, and freeze you with ice shards. Now, after you defeat these bosses, you will start to gain new abilities. These can be things for combat, such as a new attack spell or defense spell that will help to keep you alive. In total, you are limited to only using two different spells at any given time, but you can also have an ultimate. The ultimates tend to have a very long cooldown, but they are extremely powerful, so it kind of balances out. The one we found ourselves using and liking the most was the one that allowed us to summon a large ice golem, which would attack for us and give us a protection shield for a short duration. In total, there are currently, at the time of recording this video, 20 plus combat abilities and 10 different ultimate abilities for you to unlock and choose from. With that being said, a lot of these abilities are significantly better for PvP than others might be, so you will have to be careful about which ones you choose. One of the great things about V-Rising though is that if you don't want to play on a PvP server, then you don't have to. There is about 30 to 60 hours of content for you on a PvE server alone. However, I would say that a lot of the long-term players will be playing on PvP servers due to its replayability value. On PvP servers, there is always going to be the threat of raids and open world PvP, which will keep you on your toes. Thankfully, if you can't stay up 24-7, 365, there are PvP servers that limit raid times and limit what can be stolen from you. The two primary options on public servers are regular PvP and full loot PvP servers. Regular PvP will allow you to take non-gear related items from other players and raid their castles for loot, but not destroy them during specific times of the day. Full loot PvP servers, on the other hand, will allow you to still raid them within a certain time window, take every single item from enemy players, and destroy their castles. The good news though is that if you do want to blend all these rules, then there are custom servers that players can run and will allow you to make your own settings. Now there's some core mechanics such as the blood system and sunlight mechanic that play a huge role in your gameplay. You see since you are a vampire you don't need food or water you only need blood in order to survive. To get the blood, you will need to find enemies around the map and get them low enough so that you can drink them dry. Each time you do, they will have a blood type and blood purity percentage. Let's say you drank some low percentage rogue blood. You will still be full, but you will only get a small buff, whereas if you had drank 100% rogue blood, you would have gotten a massive buff. 
this can play a critical role in combat, so it's something that always keeps you aware of the enemies around you, even if they aren't really a threat anymore. The sunlight mechanic also plays a very important role in V Rising. It essentially acts as a way to keep you on your toes at all times. For an example, if you get caught in a fight and there's no shade nearby, then you will very shortly burst into flames and take massive damage at a very quick rate. This can also happen during travel, so you will have to be very aware anytime it's not night, since there is always a chance of the sun burning you alive if you aren't careful. Castle building is essentially your base building within V Rising. The reason it's so important is because your castle is the gateway to upgrading and progressing through the game. Aside from it being your primary way of storing loot, refinement of resources, crafting, and farming, it also takes up a massive amount of space. We aren't talking about a rust base here that's the size of a 2x2, two two, we're talking about a 150 plus foundation size base, and that's not even the cap. There are tons of other things to do in your castle, such as decorate it, convert humans to vampire servants, store fresh drinks in cages, and send your servants out on missions. The castle is one of the most in-depth features and honestly deserves a video all to itself. So now let's move into the pros and cons section for the video. First up for the pros is that the castle building in this game just feels absolutely epic. Base building in most survival games has you focus on keeping everything as condensed as possible, whereas V Rising has taken the other route and made it feel nearly impossible to fell out your entire territory. The struggle is no longer, is it too small, but rather, how can I use all of this space? Next for the pros is the heavy lean into the vampire theme of the game. They didn't just say, let's make a base survival game and slap a theme on it like many other titles do, but instead took the vampire theme and said, let's make the theme into a survival game, which has resulted in some epic gameplay mechanics such as the raiding, drinking blood for food, and always having to be aware of the sun. After that is the fact that the game is not just a run sim to go find resources all the time. You do have to go get resources, yes, but it doesn't feel boring since you're always on your toes with the sun and on the lookout for high percentage blood types. Another pro is that the boss fights just feel incredibly intense for a survival game. Don't get me wrong, games like Valheim did a great job too, but this game has tons of bosses already, and each one of them feels fun to fight, and like a lot of thought went into their mechanics. I feel like I'm doing a raid in an MMO or something every time I fight a boss. And lastly for the pros is that the progression felt extremely solid and rewarding. Whether it be learning a recipe, researching a new item, downing a boss, or just crafting a new piece of gear, it always felt extremely rewarding and meaningful. Now for the cons. First up for the cons is that this game has day one DLC, and yes, it is only cosmetic, but still having day one DLC, for me at least, is a red flag. I would like to see this maybe introduced after the game was complete, but it is only cosmetic, so I'm not really complaining too much to be honest. And the last con I have for you today is that playing solo at the moment kinda sucks a little bit. To be fair, you can change a ton of settings if you're hosting a private server, which is how you'd be playing solo, but if you're playing solo on like a PvP public server or a public PvE server, you won't be able to change all those settings. So I'll just say if you are planning on playing by yourself, I highly recommend you play on a private server, you just won't be able to interact with other players. It is still playable solo, just make sure when you're playing on a private server by yourself that you turn down the the difficulty of some of the bosses because they get extremely difficult towards the end game and if you're not extremely good at this game you will probably struggle. So now it's time for the rating for the game and when we rate games we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that we spend on the game. So for this game in particular in V Rising we would want to get roughly 20 hours of enjoyment out of the $20 that we spent and after putting well over 24 played hours into this game we give it. 9 out of 10 potatoes. V Rising was honestly a huge breath of fresh air when it comes to an early access survival game. We are so used to seeing early access games launch incredibly uncompleted and sometimes in entirely unplayable states, but V Rising has shown us what an early access game is capable of with good developers. The game has far more content and significantly less bugs than any other early access game I have played in the last several years, if not forever. The fact that if you play the game only on a PvE server, you can still get 30 to 60 hours of content out of it is incredibly impressive, and that doesn't even touch the whole idea of PvP really being the end game that's intended for it in the long term. While it's definitely a little unbalanced at the moment for solo play on public servers, and having a day one DLC is certainly a red flag as well, I still feel it is safe to say that V Rising is without a doubt worth the cost.
Before you guys go, thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more survival game content. A big shout out to all of our members and subscribers, and don't forget to check out our links in the description below for things like our music library and Epic Games Creator Code, as these are just ways for you to help support the channel. Otherwise, thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.